So this will be a case-based talk on, uh, on the impact of advanced imaging uh, on routine evaluation of brain neoplastic disease, particularly the surveillance and evaluation of patients with neoplastic disease. I think this slide sort of sums up uh, uh, the, the key principle here, is that if you have a patient who hasn't been treated, who uh, uh, has a known primary, and you see a large enhancing mass, nobody has any trouble determining that this is a metastatic focus. On the other hand, if this patient is under treatment for metastatic disease, perhaps having uh, radiation therapy, you have really no idea what this is. Really, the only acceptable answer if I was to ask you what is this and what should we do about it is I really have no idea. So that, you know, that principle is really kind of important, and we have tools in our hands uh, that are ubiquitously available, um, probably available for your clinical use on a day-to-day -day basis that can help you make the differentiation. So I'm going to show you a number of cases that will convince you that we really don't know what we're looking at and that our reports have very little value unless you go the extra step and do the characterization that is possible with today's scanners. A patient with a known breast carcinoma, the brain exam with and without contrast was normal. Uh, on subsequent follow-up examination, uh, roughly eight months later, uh, there is a new enhancing lesion within the right frontal lobe. See, it's right here, okay? You'll notice that it really is very conspicuous on the uh, flare, a little harder to see on the T1, and that's because this is a contrast-enhanced flare. Contrast enhancement comes through on the flare and will often make small lesions more conspicuous. It's one of the reasons we do contrast-enhanced flare. We actually do the flare after contrast as opposed to before. Um, it also gives you a delay, which increases the conspicuity of your contrast enhancement on your T1-weighted images. So that's just another free benefit. We have no trouble determining this is a metastasis. Patient was treated, came back roughly six months later. There's the initial lesion. Here's the follow-up lesion. So now you see, well, it's bigger. There's a second ring-enhancing lesion. You know, what do we think about this? Is this an abscess related to treatment? Is it a sterile tumor residual? Is this treatment change and of no concern, or is this an area of recurrent or residual tumor? Anybody think this is tumor? Okay, you got a few hands. Who thinks this is, we can, a few more hands. Who thinks this is um, treatment-related change, radiation, necrosis, call it what you like? Okay, the, really, the only acceptable answer to every one of these questions is that we have no idea, but I like that you're committing to what your gut tells you. Okay, so here we are. We, um, we didn't know what this was. We hoped it was treatment-related change, but as you can see, we were so certain we brought the patient back for a follow-up examination in two months. And a lot of the hidden lesson behind the cases I'm going to show you is that by being more certain, we can um, relax the follow-up interval. If we're nervous, you're going to come back in two months. If we're less nervous, you might come back in a year. But in this particular case, we were thinking, well, it's treatment-related change, let's hope for the best. And then the patient came back in two months, and what do you see? The um, enhancing lesion has gotten bigger. The surrounding T2 prolongation has gotten bigger, 